Welcome back to Battleground Florida. Joining me now is John Stemberger, the president of conservative and Christian group Liberty Council Action, and Christina Diamond, the CEO of Roots List, which works to elect people who support abortion access. But before we begin this discussion, I want you to listen to Governor Ron DeSantis at a Florida GOP breakfast gathering during the RNC. This is what he said about Amendment 4. We have two constitutional amendments that the left has put on the ballot. Uh, one is a uh, constitutional uh, amendment, Amendment 4, uh, to e eliminate all pro-life protections, parental consent for abortion, and have abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. Now, that is wrong. That is something that we have to defeat. And as you just heard from the governor, that's how he interprets Amendment 4. Do you agree we'll begin with John? Yeah, it's too extreme and it's not what it seems. Um, it has no definitions. Most constitutional amendments have definitions. Uh, the medical marijuana amendment had four pages of definitions. Amendment 4 has no definitions. There's no doctors required. It talks about health care providers, but there's really no doctors provided that have to be required to approve the abortion for any health reason. Um, there's also no parental consent. We saw in the state of Ohio where this kind of law was passed. Also, now parental consent laws are being challenged. Uh, and then finally, the financial impact statement will say that we're not sure if this is going to be taxpayers' funding of abortion if this amendment passes. So we think it's bad law and bad policy. And Christina, I'm pretty sure you disagree with the governor's statement and why. So Amendment 4 really brings us back to where we were before with Roe versus Wade. This is really a private decision between women, their doctors, and their families. And these are complicated medical procedures that women need to decide, um, again, with their doctors um, in these private moments on what's best for them. And Amendment 4 brings it back to uh, getting doctors out of your personal lives. So, so it's interesting because um, the pro-choice leaders talk about a doctor and the patient, mm -hmm. but this amendment has no doctor required. That's one of the problems. A healthcare provider, there's four places in Florida statute where healthcare providers is defined. Uh, three of them don't have any doctors at all required or physicians. They could have easily said physician is required to approve the abortion, but they didn't. They said healthcare provider. That could be a massage therapist. It could be any one of dental technicians. It's a very broad definition. And of course, they want abortion clinic workers who are not doctors to approve the abortions. And that's a big problem. But you don't suspect dentists will be giving abortion, giving someone an abortion. Okay? Look, it's very, it's very broad. That's the problem. They don't. They could have specifically used the word physician or doctor. They didn't. They use healthcare provider, and it's an extremely broad definition under Florida law. Well, I can tell you, women when they become pregnant are going to their physician for medical advice. Um, Data is not showing that they're going anywhere else. And again. Let's just say that the Republicans in Tallahassee are not physicians or medical professionals who are making these rules. Let's bring this back home and make this a family, a personal issue. And that's what's important in this amendment is that we don't want the politicians coming in and saying what kind of medical procedures that we're allowed to have. And do you wish to, I guess, battle this debate here? Do you wish it said maybe physician or is healthcare provider okay in the amendment? Again, I think it goes back to when you're pregnant as a woman, you are always going to see your OBGYN or your uh, normal person that you go to see for your annual physical. You're not going anywhere else when you get uh, a, pre uh, a positive pregnancy test. It's, it's outrageous to think that you're going anywhere else. And then I also talked to a doctor here who helps Florida Democrats about concerns from Republicans involving the amendments language that we were talking about. Here's what he had to say. There's concern that since it's only two sentences, that it's deceptive. It's not that difficult. It's in English. And if you want to discuss when life begins, fine. But I want to have my right to have my relationship with my God and my doctor and my life. And if I'm a woman, I want to have that right to be able to make that decision. So, Christina, what do you say to people who believe that this amendment is deceptive? Yeah. We think that the language is very clear. Um, the courts have looked at the language and says it's clear and has agreed to keep it on the ballot. It's really up to the voters now to do their research um, and think in their heart. The, what is in place right now in Florida is just cruel. And we have to trust women, we have to trust doctors, and we have to um, but let people make these own decisions in their home, what's best for their family, for whatever reason it is. 
So we would ask voters to really look at the language and look at the financial impact statement that economists determine what the impact is going to be because taxpayers funding abortion will happen if this amendment passes. We've seen this happen in Michigan. Michigan just passed a similar very strong pro-abortion amendment and now they're challenging that saying that the Medicaid laws, the laws saying that public funding of Medicaid for abortions it has to be struck down. So we'll see that again in Florida. This is a very extreme amendment. Whether you're pro-choice or pro-life, this amendment does not represent the mainstream of Florida. It will strike down parental consent laws. It will have public funding of abortion. There's no definitions here at all. They could have defined doctor. They could have defined medical provider, but they didn't. They could have defined viability, but they didn't. It, it, it sounds first like it's a, a reasonable restriction on abortion, like Roe versus Wade, right, where we talk about viability in the state regulating abortion. But then they open it up to health. Well, health, the courts have interpreted health I mean very broad. It could mean mental stress. Health is such a broad definition, um, and it really opens the door to really abortion for any health reason whatsoever. Now, I want to talk about Florida resident and former President Trump. Donald Trump has come out against the Amendment 4, but also says the current six-week ban is too strict. Here are his answers when asked about the issue just a couple weeks ago. Well, I think the six-week is too short. Uh, it has to be more time, and so that's, and I've told them that I want more weeks. So you'll vote in favor of the amendment? I'm, I'm voting that, I am going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. The Democrats are radical because the nine months is just a ridiculous situation that where you can do an abortion in the ninth month. All of that stuff is unacceptable. So I'll be voting no for that reason. John, I want to get your reaction first. When the former president said his first statement, what went through your mind? Well, he's talking about abortion generally. He was not talking about this amendment. He has come out clearly Donald Trump is opposing Amendment 4. He said he's going to vote against it, and for good reason. It's a very extreme amendment. It could allow abortion through all nine months of pregnancy. There's really no restriction. The restriction of the Florida law for that would be gone because when you enshrine something as a fundamental right, like freedom of speech or freedom of religion, any law that burdens it would automatically be struck down. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about making the right to abortion a fundamental constitutional right, unfettered. So any law challenging or burdening it would be struck down. But when he talked about Florida, he said six weeks too short. Your that, thoughts? That's his opinion. Uh, but his opinion and my opinion are not on the ballot. What's on the ballot is Amendment 4, and Amendment 4 is very extreme, and mainstream Florida is not going to understand. Not, they're not going to support it if they understand it rightly. And what do you think about the former president's statements, Christina? Well, six weeks is too extreme. And we've seen that it goes from 15 weeks to six weeks, and these bans continue to get worse and worse. Most women do not know that they're pregnant at six weeks. They're not even able to get a doctor's appointment that soon. And let me just say, women are not having abortions up until the ninth month. There are very extreme ca cases when there's the, the life of the child, the, of the fetus is not viable or the, the health of the mother is in danger. But most women are, these are, most women are not having abortions up until the ninth month. That is just completely inaccurate information. And what do you think when people say stuff like that, it, especially it was said on the debate stage recently at the presidential debate, what do you think about that? I think it's just fear tactics. Um, I think when you look at the data, uh, most women, uh, there are like very few instances, like I said, of women having abortions that late. And when they are, it's because of fetus viability or because of the health of the mother. If anyone's carrying a pregnancy that long, it's because they, they want to have a baby. And Amendment 4 does talk about having physicians involved in these decisions. And again, let's have these conversations conversations with our physicians. Um, doctors take an oath to protect their patients, and I believe that's what they're trying to do. Well, thank you so much, Christina and John, for joining us. I really do appreciate you sure. guys for having this discussion. And we will be right back with more right here on Battleground Florida.